Just over a month ago now, I came out with a video talking about which Kindle is best for you. And I recognize that not everybody has Kindles. Kobos are also very, very popular. And in today's video, I wanna make a video comparing every single Kobo out there and helping you decide which one is best for you. Kobos are not the same thing as Kindle, mainly because there's actually five models here to choose from compared to the three on the Kindle side. Let's jump into it. Now the first Kobo I wanna talk about is the Kobo Nia. This is the lowest Kobo you can buy, starting at $100. I will say it's often on sale for less than 100 bucks, so if price is a big issue for you, I definitely think the Kobo Nia might be worth it for you. However, in my personal opinion, I do think it's worth saving up the extra 20 bucks or so for the next model up. Here's why. The Kobo Nia has a six inch display, which is not bad. However, the display only has a 212 PPI resolution. PPI stands for pixels per inch, and the baseline standard is 300 PPI. And you can't really notice the difference too much, but if you're reading a lot, you definitely wanna have the best resolution possible. The crispiness of the text when reading a books on here is not the best compared to the other Kobos on this table. On top of that, the Kobo Nia is missing out on the warm light temperature control, which almost every other Kobo on this table has. I think that's a really important feature for reading books at night before going to bed. And then lastly, the Kobo Nia also only has a 900 megahertz processor, which is very, very slow compared to the other ones on this table. And just in general, I will say though, speed is not really an issue on any of the Kobos. The software is really well optimized. So I think you'll be fine in terms of the speed on the Kobo Nia, but definitely for the display issues, like the no warm light temperature control and also the 212 PPI resolution. I think those two reasons by itself are totally worth the upgrade to the next model up, which is the Kobo Clara. Now the Kobo Clara, in my opinion, is the gold standard when it comes to all the Kobos over here. I think this is the device that you'll get the most value for your buck. This device is the same six inch display as the Kobo Nia, but you're getting all those things that you're missing out on on the Nia. For example, you get 300 PPI resolution, you get that warm light temperature control, all at that 120 price point, only $20 more than the Kobo Nia. I think those two reasons by themselves is totally worth the upgrade. But on top of that, you're also getting a one gigahertz processor. So speed should definitely not be an issue on this device. And also the build quality on this device is much nicer. The plastic they use feels more premium than the Kobo Nia. Now I also want to mention the Kobo Clara is a direct competitor to the Kindle Paperwhite. And I do believe this device blows the Kindle Paperwhite out of the water in terms of speed, as well as that warm light temperature control. So if you are not tied to the Kindle ecosystem, I do personally think the Kobo Clara is a better device in terms of the hardware and the price that you're paying. Now I do have an entire video comparing the Clara and the Kindle Paperwhite, link for that down below. I hope that'll answer most of your questions. Questions. Moving on to the next Kobo in this lineup, we have the Kobo Libra H2O. This device starts at 169, about 50 bucks more than the Clara, and you do get a few different features for that extra money you're paying. Firstly, the H2O in the device name stands for waterproofing. You do get some water resistance in this device. I don't use that personally, but if you're by the pool, by the beach, in the bathtub, wherever you may be reading books, if you need water resistance, the H2O device over here is a great pick for that purpose. Purpose. Also, for the extra money you're paying, you're getting a seven inch display versus the six inch display on the Clara and the Nia. That one extra inch in terms of display size does make a nice difference in terms of the amount of text you can read on the screen. I really do like having a seven inch display. It compares very nicely to my Kindle Oasis that also has a seven inch display. Now on the Libra H2, you're also getting the 300 PPI resolution and the warm light temperature control, which are both really, really important for reading books. However, you're also getting page turn buttons. And when you first buy an e-reader, you may think page turn buttons are important. You may not want to use touchscreen, but the page turn buttons on this device, I have not had a good experience with. Now I have a whole video talking about this, link for that down below, where I do the review on the Libra H2O. But my personal experience with these page turn buttons is they don't work half the time. Pressing them is really annoying, and I just never had a good experience with these page turn buttons. So don't buy this device for the page turn buttons. 
If you want to buy this device, you should be buying it for the larger display as well as the H2O waterproofing. And of course, one final note about the Libra over here. If you want a nice durable device, this is really great for that. It does have a rubberized back, so it's really great to toss around. Holding it feels really nice, very nice and grippy. Where the other two were plastic, this one is now rubber. And it just feels so much nicer to hold. I can toss this to my bag, no case needed. It just feels really nice to hold. Next up, we have the Kobo Form. Now this device used to be the most premium one up until very recently. This costs $249 and has an 8 inch display. This device is also water resistant. So again, the only two water resistant Kobos you can choose from are the Libra H2O and the Kobo Forma. This device also has that rubberized back, but one thing they added in this one is they made the rubberized front as well. The Libra has a plastic front on the screen bezels. This one is basically all rubber all around the whole device. That that makes holding this thing feel so much nicer. I can toss this around, put it in my bag, travel with it, no worries whatsoever about a case. I know it's very durable. It just feels so nice and grippy to hold. Now the cool thing about the Forma is you have an eight inch display. And I think the eight inch display mark is a really interesting place to be. It's an inch bigger than the Kindle Oasis, which is really nice, but it's also smaller than the Kobo Ellipsa. It's right in the perfect place, I would say. Any bigger than this, and I wouldn't want to travel around with this device, but any smaller than this, you kind of lose out on that wow factor of the display. This eight inch screen really makes you look at the device and be like, wow, this feels so much different than any other e-reader, but it's still small enough where you can move around the house and travel around with it too. You can fit so much more text on the page because of the larger display. It's really, really nice to use. The one downside of this device though is the power button. And I know it sounds like a ridiculous downside, but it really is. This power button is the worst power button I've ever used. Pressing it is so, so difficult. I don't know what happened with this device. I thought it was defective at first, but no, that's how they built it. The power buttons on the side of the device and pressing on it takes a lot of pressure. So putting that aside, you may want to get a case to avoid the power button, but if you don't care about that, you don't mind putting extra pressure, the premium feeling of this device is really nice. The rubberized back, the rubberized front, just holding it feels so premium and durable. Now with the Forma, you can choose between eight gigabytes and 32 gigabytes. So if having extra storage space is important for you, definitely get the Forma. You can choose 32 gigabytes for that purpose. Now lastly here, we have the Kobo Ellipsa. This is the newest device that just come out most recently, and this is the most premium Kobo you can buy right now, starting at $399. Now the biggest selling point of this device is not just an e-reader, it's a note-taking device. It comes with the stylus, it also comes with the case, and you cannot buy the device on its own. You have to buy the Ellipsa pack, which comes with the stylus and the case, which is why it costs $400. It's a bit pricey, but you're getting a few accessories included in the box. Now this device only comes in one storage capacity of 32 gigabytes, and it has a few interesting quirks. The first is it has a 10 inch display, which is a full two inches bigger than the Forma. However, the display is not as good in terms of quality. It actually goes down to a 227 PPI resolution. Normally, this is not a big deal, but on this device, I do see the difference when taking notes with the stylus. You can definitely tell the resolution is not as crisp as all the other Kobos here. It's not the biggest deal in the world because the display is so big, it kind of compensates for the lack of resolution. However, on top of that, you're also missing out on the warm light temperature control. You don't have any warm light flexibility on the Ellipsa over here. So for reading books, this may not be the best device for you. If you want to take notes and that's really important to you, then yes, the Ellipsa is the only device that can do that. However, if reading is really important to you, having that lower resolution and the lack of warm light really makes a big difference in your reading experience. A few other interesting points, the Ellipsa has a 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor. I think that's really interesting because it has the beefiest hardware specs of everything here, but I think I've experienced the most lag and glitching on the Ellipsa. And one really interesting point I definitely want to call out is the Ellipsa is the only one here using USB-C. Every other Kobo that I've talked about so far uses micro USB, very ancient technology. USB-C should be the standard right now. And because the device is so new, I kind of expected it to have USB-C and they did. So hopefully when all these other Kobos get refreshed, hopefully they do get refreshed in the future, they will come with USB-C. But right now, the Ellipsa is the only one that comes with it. In my personal opinion, the Ellipsa is great for students or anyone who values note-taking. If you want to read, the other Kobos are probably best for you. But if you're a bookworm and you don't take no 
notes. Don't get the ellipsa. Only if you want to take notes regularly while you're reading or on PDFs or write your own notebooks, then the ellipsa is great for that. So in summary over here, let me give you my high level thoughts of everything we've talked about so far. The ellipsa is a great note taking device. If that's important to you, get the ellipsa. If you have the extra money and you like to read a lot, get the Kobo Forma. That is a beautiful device for reading books on a premium device. If you're on a budget, I would recommend the Kobo Clara. The Kobo Clara is a great price point. You get all the major features at a very inexpensive cost. If you want to check out my video comparing all the Kindles and see how they stack up to these Kobos, link for that on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.